when we were in high school, we were in college, a group of us girl, girls, like we were all hanging out with a group of guys, and we got the nerve, we asked the guys, what's the most attractive thing about a woman to you guys? And we're like, be gentle, right? So they went off to their little powwow, their little man huddle, and they were talking about what is the most attractive thing about a woman, and they came back, and we were like really excited that they came up with something, and they said, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it. Holiness and confidence. We were like, dang, that's deep. We were thinking something more physical. And they were like, no, no, holy, holiness and confidence. Like, even guys that aren't into their faith would say, a girl who's strong and sure of herself and does the right thing. And we were like, okay. So holiness and confidence. And we all, all the women sat there and were like, how the heck can we be holy and confident? Like, does that have words that go with it? What is that? I mean, like, we had no clue where to start with that. So for the past, you know, what, seven or eight years, I've been trying to think about what is that, what is that, what does that look like? And so over time, through a lot of help from guys and other women, I've put together a list. And this woman is what I call the simply irresistible woman. Are you ready? She is feminine, confident, and virtuous. These are virtues in every category. Feminine, she's in control of her emotions. She's gentle and kind, graceful and sincere, patient and flexible, doesn't gossip, isn't rude, drama is a major turnoff, poised and modest, open to the needs of others, nurturing and welcoming, joyful and fun, and that bottom one is has self-confidence. In, in confident, in control of her emotions, stands up for what is right, has courage, is not afraid to confront and help someone. She's genuinely excited for another, not jealous or vain. I'm gonna repeat that one. Genuinely excited for another, not jealous or vain. If you can figure that one out, all the rest of them will come much easier. Intelligent, speaks with conviction, a true leader, responsible, prudent, honest, Virtuous, in control of her emotions, puts others first before themselves. Excellence in all things, chastity, sobriety, and academic excellence. She pushes herself, she's not lazy. She has self-control, balance and order, charity and service. She forgives, she's trustworthy, loyal, and, and pure. Who thinks that's a pretty simple irresistible woman? Who, which moms would like to have this one as their daughter? Who would like to have this as your mom? Everyone following me? <laughs> Good. The point is, we're not going for perfection. I don't expect any of you women to be this woman. This, the Lord said, you know, it's okay. Come to me where you are, and I will love you. But I want you to strive. So I always say, don't, don't fear perfection. Go for striving. I want you to strive after this list. Married women, doesn't matter how old you are, this is your list. This is my list. This is everyone's list. Because this woman, she's got it going on, right? So many awesome things. Again, not perfect, but just finally, we know what we're supposed to be doing. I have women all over the country, women and men, all over the country that took up my virtue challenge is on my website, and you pick one virtue every week, and you get together with your accountability partners, and you talk about how you lived it out and how you did not live it out. So the one that the girls do a lot is excellence in all things, chastity, sobriety, and academic and they get together every week and they talk about how they either did well or did not do well, and they come up with rewards and reprimands, and you just, you would not believe it, it's amazing. I have a group of guys, oh my gosh, it's just so awesome. I have a group of guys that have, praise God, they told me about it, but they're a group of men, there's six of them, and they actually get together once a week in prayer rosary together for purity. And they have a texting chain where if at any point during the week, any one of them falls, whether it's with pornography or sexually, they have to text all the other guys, and they fast the entire next day. All of them. Don't eat the whole next day. Is that not awesome? Like, when I tell that to the, the college girls, they're like, oh my gosh, that is beautiful. It's like, it's attractive, right? Like, virtue is attractive. These men, if they mess up on their little sheet, they fast for a whole day. Some of the girls were like, what, we have to fast? I'm like, no, no, no. Do what you think is going to help you to be strong. Do you know what I mean? How awesome. Okay, here's the point. Feminine, confident, virtuous. This is a tall order, but isn't this what you're looking for in a guy? The simply irresistible man. He's masculine, confident, and virtuous. Confident and virtuous are the same list. And then I put in masculine. He's in control of his emotions. He's a leader, provider, protector, initiator. He's chivalrous 
brave, courageous, gentle, intuitive, honorable, joyful, and fun. And a college guy came up to me after talking. He's like, can I get that list? He's like, I need to look up a couple words. I don't know, a couple of words. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I love you because you care. You're trying. I'm sure he was thinking about chivalrous. I have a feeling that was probably the word that he's like, what is that? Um, but it was really cool. I was talking to some guys one time, and they were like, what is that? And I said, well, perfect example, chivalry, opening a door for a woman, right? And I said, Here, here's the shocker, guys. We can actually open doors for ourselves, but we want you to do it. Do you know why? Because it's not actually the door opening. It's called anticipating a woman's needs. So you see, beautiful woman, door. Beautiful woman, woman will walk through door in three seconds. I am going to open the door for the beautiful woman to walk through. Are you guys following me? They're all like, oh my gosh. <laughs> right? And I always use the, I mean, seriously, but here's the, I mean, whole another talk. The men haven't shown them how to be good men. Whole another talk. Okay, so, but the, I mean, now you can say, like, my husband, he's so beautiful. He's always got, like, the, the 50 pound baby carrier and, like, the diaper bag that I try to make as manly as possible. And, like, you know, the cooler and the kid and this. And then I'm always like, oh, do you need some help? Like, I, you know, he anticipates my needs. He knows that I'm not going to be able to carry all this and, you know, hurt the cats, the children, and be able to open the car door. Do you guys follow me? Like, even in marriage, men are trying to anticipate our needs like Christ anticipates our needs. So when the high school and college guys get on to this, it's like, ooh, that's it. Is that simply irresistible women? Isn't that awesome? But again, we have to teach. We have to all re-educate ourselves on this whole idea of virtue. So you have the simply irresistible woman, the simply irresistible man. Can you imagine this couple coming together? What chemistry? Lasting chemistry. Because it's not all about emotions. But most of all, it's not all about themselves. Do you see any using going on? These two people are not going to use the emoticoaster because they know it's too superficial and it moves too fast. When God calls this couple to sacrifice, it will be easier because they're used to it. This woman doesn't have to fight all those insecurities because she's confident in herself. This man is fighting temptation and is a leader in his life. Neither one has to fear being alone because they're each strong and whole in who they are. Christ. What an awesome couple. That's what the start of great marriages look like. And that's what great marriages strive for. Again, no one's perfect. I hope you're not praying for Mr. Perfect because he doesn't exist. But you know what? The man that God, if you're called to marriage, the man that God has picked out for you is going to be perfect for you. He's not going to expect you to be perfect either. You're not going to expect him to be perfect. That's part of marriage is learning to love someone flaws and all, and really helping one another. Like Andy and I, his, the, those two lists I showed you, we actually use the same list. And we actually do the virtue challenge together because who is your greatest accountability partner in life? If you call the marriage, it's your spouse. If you call the religious life, it's your community of rock star sisters. If you're a priest, it's your diocesan brothers or your community of monks, right? Like in life, God has naturally set up those communities to make you strong. Thank, thank him, right? Like, awesome. <laughs> he knows that this is going to be really, really hard and that we really need each other. So I want you to remember this quote. This is one of my favorites. Dance with God, and he will let the perfect man cut in. Don't run around the dance floor throwing yourself at guys trying to fill the void. But don't seem like a wallflower feeling sorry for yourself either. Dance with God, get better at dancing, so you're ready for the partner God attacks and has prepared just for you. Yeah? Right? Like, I want this for you guys so badly. Like, I want you to not be worried about the pressure. Don't be worried about the expectations. Don't worry about being perfect. Don't worry about all of that. I just want you to become that woman and have a relationship with our Lord and grow in virtue and find your, your posse of girlfriends that are going to make you super strong and hold you accountable and run towards Christ all together. And then you'll look over and there's a cute group of guys running towards Christ all together. Right? I mean, that's what I want for you guys. One of my taglines on my website is reclaiming virtue for a drama-free life. Life is dramatic enough the way it is. Please don't make it worse, right? We have the ability to either add drama or eliminate drama. Anybody else want to eliminate drama? That's what I want to do. All right, table 17 wants to eliminate drama. Good work. Okay, I'm gonna end with a little bit on what I call tackling the beast. I am so pumped you guys are having a modesty fashion show. 
Uh, when I was a Benedictine, we had one, and my favorite part of the entire fashion show was when we had three religious sisters um, do the, oh my gosh, had a, a choreographed dance um, down the catwalk. It was, I wet myself, it was awesome. Um, I, nuns just break it out sometimes, you know? I just love it. And they, they modeled their habits, which was very, very awesome. Um, and it was so great for some of the women to, we had all these different categories and like, I don't know about you guys, but it was probably junior year of college before I understood what was modest and what wasn't. I could have used a talk when I was 14 or whatever on what is modest and what is not. And so I'm sure you guys feel there's four words when people say them, everyone just goes, those four words are heaven, hell, modesty, and chastity. Everyone under the age of 21 and above are just like, I'm, I'm not listening anymore, right? So here's my, here's my challenge to you. Modesty, chastity, heaven, and hell are four of the most important words that can be in your vocabulary next to virtue. Modesty is, I want you guys to don't think about the way, I mean, modesty is, does not equal Debbie Downer. Modesty does not equal, I can never be cute again a day in my life. Modesty does not equal, I can't go to you know, any of those stores and find something cute. I, that's what we're gonna go into, it's called Tackling the Beast. Let's get at the heart of what this is all about and why we should even care. Does that sound good? Let's do it. Tackling the beast. Oh my gosh, I love this. It's not about having what you want, it's wanting what you've got. If you have curly hair, you want straight hair. If you're tall, you want to be short. If you have big boobs, you want small boobs. If you, you're laughing, it's so true, right? If you have green eyes, you want blue eyes. Um, we could go on forever. I lived in a dorm with 142 girls. There was this one girl, she had fire red hair, and it was perfect curls. And she would wake up in the morning and just like, you know, and she was out the door and we're all like, I hate you, right? Like, she was gorgeous. What do you think that girl did every morning for an hour and a half? Straight her hair. Anyone shocked? No. How many of you, one of my best friends is 6'1". She's gorgeous. And what do you think she does? Only wears flats, right? Like, I mean, Anything, every, everything we talk about when it comes to like the physical, it's not, this is my, I love this, Cheryl Crow, Hollywood gets two points. Um, it's not having what you want, it's wanting what you've got. My dad, 